Good morning, learners! It's Earth Science Day with Teacher Jane. Welcome to my class. Are you excited for a fun learning session today? If you're ready, so am I. So let's get started. But make sure you have the following before we start. A pen and paper to jot down some important notes. And don't forget our class rules. Do not leave your post if the class is still ongoing. And questions will be entertained through my Facebook account at facebook.com slash janet.atienza.560. So for the objectives of this lesson is for you to compare which warms up faster, soil or water, and illustrate and describe sea breeze and land breeze. So let's take a quick review of our previous lesson first. So what happens when the air is heated? Well, if you can still remember the last activity that we had, when the tube was put in the hot water, the air molecules inside the test tube is rising up because it is heated and the balloon starts to inflate. So it means that the air is expanding. But when you put it in the cold water, the air contracts and the balloon deflates. So what happens to the air in the surroundings as warm air rises? So in the previous activity, as you can see, air in the surroundings can be affected by rising warm air. First, the air above the candle becomes warm because of the flame. What happens to this warm air? It rises. As warm air rises, what happens to the air in the surroundings? It will move toward a place where warm air is rising. But you cannot see the air. How can you tell that it is moving? Well, the movement of the smoke from the incense shows the movement of the air. So, have you experienced swimming in the beach during nighttime? How do you feel the water? Is it cold or warm? Well, if you have actually experienced swimming in the beach during nighttime, water is actually warm. Yes. How did it happen? Well, you're about to know the reason why. So today's lesson is all about sea breeze and land breeze. This is our first activity. But before we start, I want to ask this question first. Which do you think will heat faster? Is it the soil or the water? Let's try to find out if your prediction is right. So here's a short video of my experimentation in determining which heats faster and cools faster between the water and the soil. These are the materials that we need in this experiment. A pair of identical containers. You can use any containers at home as long as it is identical. Fill in one cup of soil and water for each container. Two thermometers. You can use digital thermometers at home. An iron stand and iron clamp. You can use any materials at home that can hold the thermometer during the experiment. So prepare the setup like this. Make sure that the tip of the thermometer in the water should not touch the bottom of the container. And now, let's take the initial temperature of the water and the soil. As you can see, the initial temperature of the water is 30 degrees Celsius and for the soil is also 30 degrees Celsius. Record it in a table. Take note of the initial temperature of water and soil. 
Bring it under the sun and record its temperature every five minutes for 15 minutes. After five minutes, the temperature of the water is 36 degrees Celsius and the soil is 37 degrees Celsius. After 10 minutes, the temperature of the water is now 37 degrees Celsius while the soil is 39 degrees Celsius. After 15 minutes, the temperature of the water is now 38 degrees Celsius while the temperature of the soil is now 42 degrees Celsius. These are the data of temperature readings under the sun. Now bring it back to the shade and record its initial temperature. Record again the temperature every 5 minutes for 15 minutes. After 5 minutes of waiting, the temperature of water is now 36 degrees Celsius and the soil is 38 degrees Celsius. After 10 minutes, the temperature of water is 35 degrees Celsius while the soil is 36 degrees Celsius. And after 15 minutes, the temperature of water is now 34 degrees Celsius while the soil is 35 degrees Celsius. This is now the data of the temperature readings under the shade. So let's take a look at our data. What are the initial temperature of soil and water? The water and the soil both have the same initial temperature of 30 degrees Celsius. What is the difference between the temperature of soil and water after 15 minutes? The difference of the temperature of the soil from 30 to 42 degrees Celsius is 12 degrees Celsius. While the temperature of the water from 30 to 38 degrees Celsius is 8 degrees Celsius. Which has a higher temperature after 15 minutes when exposed to the sun? Is it the water or the soil? Based from a record, the answer is the soil. So which heats up faster, water or soil? As shown in our data, it is the soil that heats up faster. Now, what happened to the temperature of the water and the soil when brought to the shade? Bringing them into the shade makes its temperature decreases. So which cools faster, water or soil? The data shows that the initial temperature of the water when brought to the shade is 38 degrees Celsius and went down to 34 degrees Celsius after 15 minutes. So the difference is only 4 degrees Celsius. While the soil is from 42 degrees Celsius, it went down to 35 degrees Celsius, which has a difference of 7 degrees Celsius. This means that the soil cools faster than the water. There you have it. So, is your prediction right? Great! You just figured out that the soil heats and cools faster than the water. The last activity shows that soil absorbs heat faster than water. At the same time, soil releases heat faster as compared to water. It is because water is a slow conductor of heat. Thus, it needs to gain more energy than the sand or dry land in order for its temperature to increase. So, the sand and water in the previous activity stand for land and water in real life. From the activity, you have learned that sand heats up faster than water and that sand cools down faster than water. In the same way, when land surfaces are exposed to the sun during the day, they heat up faster than bodies of water. At night, when the sun has set, the land loses heat faster than bodies of water. How does this affect the air in the surroundings? Imagine that you are standing by the sea along the shore. During the day, the land heats up faster than the water in the sea. The air above land will then become warm ahead of the air above the sea. You know, 
what happens to warm air, right? It rises, yes. So the warmer air above the land will rise because it's hotter in the land, therefore, the land, I mean, the air there will rise and the air above the sea will then move in to replace the rising warm air. If you can take a look at the illustration there, you will then feel this moving air as a light wind, which is what we call the sea breeze. So the wind that we feel during daytime from sea to the land is what we call the sea breeze. And what will happen at night when the sun is gone? The land and sea will both cool down, so the temperature will decrease. But the land will lose heat faster than the water in the sea. In other words, the sea will stay warm longer. This time, the air above the sea will be warmer than that above land. So the warm air above the sea will then rise. So the air is now rising from the sea, not from the land anymore, because the land loses heat faster. So therefore, the sea is now warmer than the land. And air from land will move out to replace the rising warm air. This moving air or wind from land is called a land breeze. Let me clear this up for you. In the illustration, you can see an arrow pointing upward. This represents rising warm air. The place where warm air rises is a place where air pressure is low. So if the air pressure is low, meaning to say that the air there is light. Low stands for light. Okay? In other words, the place where warm air is rising is a low pressure area. In contrast, cold air is dense and tends to sink. The place where cold air is sinking is a high pressure area. So if it's a high pressure area, meaning to say the air there is heavy. So if it's high, it's heavy, okay? Based on what you learned so far, in what direction does air move? From a low pressure area to a high pressure area or the other way around? I bet you probably know the answer already, right? The answer is from high pressure to low pressure area. So to sum it up, sea breeze is the air that moves from the sea to the land, which happens during daytime. And land breeze is the air that moves from the land to the sea, which happens during nighttime. If you have any questions, you can ask me through my Facebook account that was already flashed before this lesson. Right, for this activity, illustrate sea breeze and land breeze on a piece of paper and explain. So these are the rubrics, five points if you got the illustrations correctly and well explained. Four points if the illustrations are correct, but one of the illustrations was not explained correctly. Three points if one illustration is incorrect but was able to explain. Two points, one illustration is incorrect and was not explained correctly. And I'll give you one point, even if all illustrations are incorrect, just for your effort. Next. Ooh, it's already test time. So let's try to 
if you have learned something about this lesson. So for the direction, choose the correct answer. I'll give you five seconds in every question. Question number one. During a sea breeze, which way does the wind blow? A, from the sea to the land. B, from south to north. C, from land to the sea. D, from north to south. Time starts now. Time's up. And the answer is... What? From sea breeze, which way does the wind blow? It's from the sea to the land. Letter A. Second question. Which breeze blows from land to sea? A. Sea breeze at night. B. Land breeze at day. C. Land breeze at night. Or D. Sea breeze at day. Time starts now. Time's up. The answer is letter C. Land breeze at night. Third question. Do land breezes typically happen during the day or night? A. Night. B. Day. C. Both A and B. Or D. None of them. Time starts now. All right. The answer is... Letter A, during night time. Next question. Right. Question number four. The strength of a sea breeze depends on blank. A, the difference between the temperature of the sea and land. B, the amount of precipitation that day. C, the heat of the day. D, the wind speed. Time starts now. And the answer is letter A, the difference between the temperature of the sea and land. Last question. Which of the following illustrates sea breeze? Is it picture letter A or the illustration letter B? Time starts now. And time's up. The answer is letter A. All right, did you got it perfectly? I hope so. Okay, great. So, this will be your assignment. Illustrate sea breeze and land breeze in a long bond paper. You can use any material to make this illustration. So this will be your, your rubrics. Correct illustration of sea breeze and land breeze is 25%. Creativity, 25%. Material or color harmony, 25%. Visual impact is 25% for a total of 100%. Okay, so I want you to use your imagination, your creativity to illustrate sea breeze and land breeze. You can use any materials if it's drawing or other stuffs that you can make just to illustrate sea breeze and land breeze. Are we clear? All right. Again, if you have questions about this lesson, you can just contact me through my Facebook account or you can text me. Okay. Thank you for attending this class. You can watch this video again on my YouTube channel in your convenience, especially those who are not able to watch this movie, I mean this lesson today. You can watch it in the YouTube channel that is flashed on the screen. All right. Thank you so much.